Hello BookTube and welcome to the winner's announcement video for the 2022 BookTube Prize. This is our fourth year holding the event and it's been by a wide margin our biggest competition yet. In addition to our fiction and nonfiction divisions, we've added a third division this year for translated fiction and for the first time we had more than 300 judges take part this year representing more than 45 countries. If you're new to the BookTube Prize, the purpose for this competition is to give the real world readers who participate in bookish social media a voice in identifying our favorite books of the year. We begin in January with a list of nominated titles, somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 to 100 titles per division. Then the judges vote for the books they believe should be in our competition fields. In February, we begin the first of four competitive rounds with 48 books in each division. The books are split into groups of six and each group is judged by a multi-reader panel. The judges rank the books individually from one to six and the three books with the best aggregate rankings in each group advance to the next round. In other words, we cut the field in half each round. We repeat that process for round two in April and May, and again for round three in June and July, and that gives us our six finalists for each division, which are judged in August and September. We recognize gold, silver, and bronze medalists in each division. Originally, the idea was to have a festival the first full weekend in October, with authors in attendance, a book fair with publishers booths, and the awards dinner. But because of COVID, obviously, we've only had one small meetup the very first year of the prize. I hope in the future we'll be able to realize that original plan. If you're interested in taking part as a judge for next year's event, please make sure you're subscribed to this channel and also hit the notification bell so you'll be sure to see the next video. Sometime in the next week, I'll post a call for judges video for next year's prize. It will have all the details about what being a judge entails, as well as instructions for signing up. Now, before I announce this year's winners, please indulge me for a few minutes while we look back at the 144 titles we've read this year. This might be a great time to grab some coffee or tea or even a delicious whiskey if you're celebrating like I am.
Are you ready to find out the results? I invite you to write down your predictions and see how you fared in guessing what books our judges favored. Let's get to the results. The six finalists in Translated Fiction are The Phone Booth at the Edge of the World by Laura M. I. Messina, translated from Italian by Lucy Rand. Inspired by true events, Yui loses her mother and daughter in a tsunami and wonders how she'll carry on. The novel is a moving, unforgettable story about the depths of grief, the lightness of love, and the human longing to keep the people who are no longer with us close to our hearts. How to Order the Universe by Maria Jose Ferrada, translated from Spanish by Elizabeth Breyer. For seven-year-old M, the world is guided by a firm set of principles based on her father's life as a traveling salesman. Ferrada expertly captures a vanishing way of life and a father-daughter relationship on the brink of irreversible change. At once nostalgic, dangerous, sharply funny, and full of delight and wonder, the novel is a richly imaginative debut. The Art of Losing by Alice Zenitor, translated from French by Frank Wynn. A powerful, moving family novel that spans three generations across 70 years and two shores of the Mediterranean Sea. It is a resonant people's history of Algeria and its diaspora. It's a story of how we carry on in the face of loss, loss of country, identity, language, connection. Most of all, it is an immersive, riveting excavation of the inescapable legacies of colonialism, immigration, family, and war. Disquiet by Zulfu Livinelli, translated from Turkish by Brendan Freely. A powerful story of love and faith amidst the atrocities committed by ISIS against the Yazidi people. A nuanced meditation on the nature of being human and an empathetic, probing look at the past and present of these Mesopotamian lands. Disquiet gives voice to the peoples, faiths, histories, and stories that have swept through this region over centuries. The Anomaly by Hervé Letellier translated from French by Adriana Hunter. In their own way, the passengers of Air France Flight 6 were all living double lives when they boarded the Paris to New York flight. As the flight is about to start its descent into JFK, they hit a shockingly violent patch of turbulence, emerging on the other side to a reality both perfectly familiar and utterly strange. An ingenious, timely variation on the doppelganger theme, the anomaly taps into the parts of ourselves that elude us most. Brickmakers by Selva Almada, translated from Spanish by Annie McDermott. The patriarchs of two families of brickmakers have for years nursed a mutual hatred, but their teenage sons somehow fell in love. With Romeo and Juliet overtones, Brickmakers furthers Almada's extraordinary exploration of masculinity and the realities of working class rural life. In third place, our bronze medal goes to Brickmakers by Selva Almada, translated by Annie McDermott. In second place, our silver medal goes to The Art of Losing by Alice Zenitor, translated by Frank Wynne. And our gold medal for 2022 goes to The Anomaly by Hervé Letellier, translated by Adriana Hunter. <laughs> The 
The six finalists in nonfiction are A Little Devil in America, Notes in Praise of Black Performance by Hanif Abdurraqib. With care and generosity, the author explains the poignancy of performances big and small, each one feeling intensely familiar and vital, both timeless and desperately urgent. Filled with sharp insight, humor, and heart, A Little Devil in America exalts the black performance that unfolds in specific moments in time and space, from mid-century Paris to the moon and back down again to a cramped living room in Columbus, Ohio. How the Word is Passed, A Reckoning with the History of Slavery Across America by Clint Smith. Beginning in his hometown of New Orleans, Smith leads the reader on an unforgettable tour of monuments and landmarks, those that are honest about the past and those that are not, that offer an intergenerational story of how slavery has been central in shaping our nation's collective history and memory. Informed by scholarship and brought to life by the stories of people living today, How the Word is Passed is a landmark of reflection and insight that offers a new understanding of the hopeful role that memory and history can play in making sense of our country and how it has come to be. Under a White Sky, The Nature of the Future by Elizabeth Colbert That man should have dominion over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth is a prophecy that has hardened into fact. So pervasive are human impacts on the planet that it's said we live in a new geological epoch, the Anthropocene. The question we face now is, can we change nature, this time in order to save it? Colbert examines how the very sorts of interventions that have imperiled our planet are increasingly seen as the only hope for its salvation. By turns inspiring, terrifying, and darkly comic, Under a White Sky is an utterly original examination of the challenges we face. Facing the Mountain, a true story of Japanese-American heroes in World War II by Daniel James Brown. Facing the Mountain is an unforgettable chronicle of wartime America and the battlefields of Europe. Based on Brown's extensive interviews with the families of the protagonists, as well as deep archival research, it portrays the kaleidoscopic journey of four Japanese-American families and their second-generation young men, the Nisei, who volunteered for the 442nd Regimental Combat Team and were deployed to France, Germany, and Italy, where they were asked to do the near-impossible in often suicidal missions. Whether fighting on battlefields or in courtrooms, these were Americans under unprecedented strain, doing what Americans do best, striving, resisting, pushing back, rising up, standing on principle, laying down their lives, and enduring. Chasing Me to My Grave, an artist's memoir of the Jim Crow South by Winfred Rembert, as told to Aaron I. Kelly. Rembert grew up in a family of Georgia field laborers and joined the civil rights movement as a teenager. Arrested after fleeing a demonstration, surviving a near lynching at the hands of law enforcement, Rembert spent seven years on a chain gang. During that time, he met his future wife, Patsy, who would encourage him in his 50s to start drawing and painting scenes from his youth on leather using tooling skills he learned in prison. Vivid, confrontational, revelatory, and complex, Chasing Me to My Grave is a searing memoir in prose and painted leather that celebrates black life and summons readers to confront painful and urgent realities at the heart of American history and society. Empire of Pain, The Secret History of the Sackler Dynasty by Patrick Radden Keefe. Keefe's previous book, Say Nothing, was our nonfiction silver medalist in 2020. The Sackler name adorned the walls of many storied institutions, Harvard, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Oxford, the Louvre. They are one of the richest families in the world, known for their lavish donations to the arts and sciences. The source of the family fortune was vague, however, until it emerged that the Sacklers were responsible for making and marketing a blockbuster painkiller that was the catalyst for the opioid crisis. 
A saga of three generations of the Sackler family, Empire of Pain is a masterpiece of narrative reporting and writing, exhaustively documented and ferociously compelling. It's a portrait of the excesses of America's second gilded age, a study of impunity among the super elite, and a relentless investigation of the naked greed and indifference to human suffering that built one of the world's great fortunes. In third place, our bronze medal goes to Facing the Mountain by Daniel James Brown. In second place, our silver medal goes to Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe. And our gold medal for 2022 goes to How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith. <laughs> The six finalists in fiction are The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois by Honoré Fanon Jeffers. The great scholar W.E.B. Du Bois once wrote about the problem of race in America and what he called double consciousness, a sensitivity that every African American possesses in order to survive. The novel chronicles the journey of one American family from the centuries of the colonial slave trade through the Civil War to our own tumultuous era. The main character must learn to embrace her full heritage, a legacy of oppression and resistance, bondage and independence, cruelty and resilience that is the story and the song of America itself. The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. In June 1954, 18-year-old Emmett Watson is driven home to Nebraska by the warden of the juvenile work farm where he has just served 15 months for involuntary manslaughter. His mother long gone, his father recently deceased, and the family farm foreclosed upon by the bank, Emmett's intention is to pick up his 8-year-old brother Billy and head to California where they can start their lives anew. But when the warden drives away, Emmett discovers that two friends from the work farm have hidden themselves in the trunk of the warden's car. Together, they have hatched an altogether different plan for Emmett's future, one that will take them on a 10-day fateful journey in the opposite direction to the city of New York. The Five Wounds by Kirsten Valdez Quaid. It's Holy Week in the small town of Las Penas, New Mexico, and 33-year-old, unemployed, Amadeo Padilla has been given the part of Jesus in the Good Friday procession. He's preparing feverishly for this role when his 15-year-old daughter, Angel, shows up pregnant on his doorstep and disrupts his plans for personal redemption. With weeks to go until her due date, tough, ebullient Angel has fled her mother's house, setting her life on a startling new path. Vivid, tender, Funny and beautifully rendered, The Five Wounds spans the baby's first year as five generations of the Padilla family converge. How Beautiful We Were by Mbolo Mbue Set in the fictional African village of Kosawa, How Beautiful We Were tells of a people living in fear amid environmental degradation wrought by an American oil company. Narrated from the perspective of a generation of children and the family of a girl named Thula who grows up to be a revolutionary, the novel is a masterful exploration of what happens when the reckless drive for profit, coupled with the ghost of colonialism, comes up against one community's determination to hold on to its ancestral land and a young woman's willingness to sacrifice everything for the sake of her people's freedom. The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. Shafak's previous book, 10 Minutes 38 Seconds in This Strange World, was our fiction silver medalist in 2020. 
Two teenagers, a Greek Cypriot and a Turkish Cypriot, meet at a taverna on the island they both call home. In the taverna, hidden beneath garlands of garlic, chili peppers, and creeping honeysuckle, they grow in their forbidden love for one another. A fig tree stretches through a cavity in the roof, and this tree bears witness to their hushed, happy meetings and eventually to their silent, surreptitious departures when war separates them for decades. The Island of Missing Trees is a moving, beautifully written, and delicately constructed story of love, division, transcendence, history, and eco-consciousness. Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead Great Circle ranges from Prohibition-era Montana to the wilds of Alaska to wartime London to modern Los Angeles in an epic tale of two extraordinary women whose fates collide across geographies and centuries. After being rescued as an infant from a sinking ocean liner in 1914, Marion and her twin brother Jamie are raised by their dissolute uncle in Montana. Marion is entranced by some barnstorming pilots and begins her lifelong love affair with flight. Her ultimate goal is to fly a great circle, circumnavigating the globe over the North and South Poles. A century later, Hadley is cast to play Marion in a film that centers on Marion's disappearance in Antarctica. Her immersion in the character of Marion unfolds alongside Marion's own story as the two women's destinies and their hunger for self-determination in vastly different places and times intersect in astonishing ways. In third place, our bronze medal goes to Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. In second place, our silver medal goes to The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. And our gold medal for 2022 goes to The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois by Honoré Fanon Jeffers. Thanks so much for joining me today and a huge thank you to our judges, many of whom pulled duty in all four rounds. I'll be back again soon with some brief videos as we prepare for next year's prize. Cheers and happy reading.